Hi everyone, so if you've followed me for some time you'll probably know that I have a Memory Craft 9900 which is a sewing, combined sewing and embroidery machine and although I've made sewing projects it's been a very long time since I did actually make anything with the embroidery element of my machine. So whilst I was looking in Canvas Workspace recently, I came across a little fabric project that I thought I would try. It incorporates applique and machine embroidery and it's available for free here in Canvas Workspace online. So um, rather than have to scroll through all the endless patterns that are in Canvas Workspace, if you come down to the bottom here, to this little icon that looks a bit like a page with a funnel on it and you select that it brings up the filter box and you can filter by search or filter by categories and then I'm going to click on the word categories I'm going to deselect everything and I'm just going to choose fabric and sewing and see what happens and say okay so now that has narrowed my search down, I'm going to scroll through and see if I can find the little coaster fabric project. So here it is, it's called Applique Embroidered Coaster. I'm going to select it. There's a PDF with some basic information. There's the usual little brother video that doesn't have any words or anything, just music playing that you can watch but I'm going to hopefully show you step-by-step step in today's video from downloading this file and then making the project. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to the bottom and I'm going to choose Download All Parts. That's going to drop a folder into my Downloads folder on my computer. Yours will probably drop into wherever your Downloads folder is on your computer. I'm also going to come to the get recipe and download the PDF. So it opens the PDF and you can see here it's got some very basic instructions with it but it may be handy for later. It actually tells you what size to cut the applique embroidered section once it's been stitched and it's, it's showing you here 11 and a half centimetres by 11 and a half centimetres then obviously you would probably want to add a seam allowance. I'm probably going to cut mine I think at about five by five but I'll get to that later. So if you just hover anywhere on the document there's a download icon I'm going to click that and that's now dropped that document into my downloads folder. So I'm just going to close this all down and then one thing to remember to do is go back to the filter icon and in categories just select everything so that the next time you come to search you'll have all your canvas projects just say okay and that just restores everything by default so I'm going to close that down so I'm just going to open my downloads folder and here is the folder that I downloaded now it's asking me whether I want to replace or stop the download because I've already got the folder on my desktop. So I'm going to open the downloads folder and drag out the folder. Here it is 000121. I'm going to go back to the downloads folder and drag out the PDF document. So I'm just going to left double click to open this folder and see what we've got. So basically we've got a, an image of the coaster We've got the Scan and Cut FCM Cup, which is the cutting file, and we've got the PES, which is the Brother Embroidery Folder. I'm going to drag the PDF and put that in there. I'm going to open the PES file with Embrilliance Essentials and just resave the file as a Genomi file because I use a Genomi machine and my file format is a JEF. So I'm just going to left double click on the PES file and that will automatically open this file in Embrilliance Essentials for me. I'm going to go up to the top to this yellow folder and just, I've got JEF by default. 
I'm going to scroll down and just make sure that I've got the correct hoop size that I want to use. I'm going to go to the top of my page and go File, Save Stitch File As. And I'm just going to rename this Cup Canvas JEF. And I'm just going to put it on my desktop and say Save. So I can close Embrilliance down. If you have a Brother sewing machine, you won't need to do this step. So here's my folder again, still open, and I'm just going to drag in my JEF stitch file. So I've got everything now in this one folder. Okay, so I've just inserted a USB stick. Mine's called Embroidery. And all I'm going to do now is put the Genomi stitch file from this folder onto the embroidery stick. So I'm going to left double click to open it. I have to go into this EMB folder and then into EMBF. I'm going to double click to open the file that I downloaded from Canvas and I'm going to drag my Genomi stitch file into this folder. Then I'm going to eject the USB and then I'm ready to start making the coasters. I've already pre-cut the applique cup. I did that in a YouTube live which was on Sunday the 13th of December. So I'll try and insert that clip into the video now so again i've got heat and bond ironed onto the back i'm just going to remove the paper i'm going to put heat and bond side down onto just my regular mat and obviously you might not be able to see this as well because this is white fabric on a white mat bring the machine slide it back in and load it into the machine right so now i'm going to go to retrieve data and i saved this file earlier into the machine so i'm going to jump to the last page and there are my two little applique coffee cups so i'm going to say okay i'm going to do a background scan and scan this mat to see this white piece of fabric. I'm going to just go into the settings and make sure I've got it on the darkest setting. So you're not going to be able to see the white fabric. I can't see it that great to be fair. So I'm going to go into edit and zoom in and just bring these cups down to this piece of white fabric that's down here. So let me move up a bit. And the only way that I can see where the piece of white fabric, fabric is on the mat is I can see the jagged cut edge here and I can't see the grid lines. So I know that this is the piece of fabric. So I'm just going to just double check that I'm in the right place. I'm going to say, OK, OK. I think I can just about make the outline out. I'm not so sure if I can actually move them over a bit more. I'm just going to jiggle that one over a bit, select this one and move this one over a bit more. And if I don't get it right, I can always cut it again tomorrow or I've got another piece anyway, but I need four cups. So select, cut and start. Right, let me see. I've just seen. Right, let me just check it's cut through. So I'm just going to peel. Yeah, that's cut through. So I'm going to flip you back, unload the mat, just push the machine back out of the way again for a minute. So let's just move this. And I've got two bits of my applique. Okay, so I've got my hoop tear away stabiliser and I've got my fabric and I've decided to use my smaller hoop 
and I'm only going to cut one design at a time. And that's basically because I've not really done any embroidery sewing for such a long time and I think I'd, I'd rather just do one design at a time so okay so I've got the fabric in there I'm just going to tighten up the hoop my machine also does come with some magnetic clamps so I'm just going to put a couple of those on this isn't easy doing this when there's a camera in the way so that's how it's looking now. I've already got the USB stick in the machine and I'm just going to load the hoop and choose the design. I'm going to go into new on the machine. I'm going to say OK. It's telling me that I'm using the smaller hoop, so I'm going to say yes, that's okay. It's showing me that there are five colours, but in actual fact, I'm only going to stitch this in two colours. So I'm going to use blue and black. So I'm going to put the presser foot down. I'm going to start the design. Okay, that's finished the placement line so I'm going to remove this and iron the applique on it. Okay so I'm just going to position this piece of applique that I cut on the scan and cut earlier just over this stitched placement line and I'm just going to hit it with my little mini iron just to fuse the adhesive to hold it down enough for the machine to stitch it. I'm going to put the foot down and press start and let it carry on stitching. It's stopped because it thinks I want to change colour, but I'm not changing colour at the moment until I get to the fourth colour, which is black. So I'm just going to carry on for now and then I'll let this all finish. I'll change to the black, then I need to go back to the blue and then it will be finished. OK, so it's got to colour four, which is the black. So I've just done a quick colour change. I'm going to stitch the black, then it will be back to the blue and then it will be finished. So let's remove it from the hoop. Just going to cut away some of 
these little stray bits of thread from the jump stitches and then it's just a case of deciding what size I'm going to cut the backing piece and then just assemble it using just my regular sewing machine. So I've cut a piece of backing fabric at roughly five by five and I just want to see if that gives me enough room. I think I've got plenty of room if I make it five by five and sew it together with a quarter inch seam allowance. I think I've got plenty. So yeah, so I'm just going to centre this up and cut this to five by five. Okay, so what I've done, I've measured the cup and I've found the middle and I've basically just creased a centre line. So on that centre line, I'm going to line up my ruler at two and a half inches and just make a mark. And then I'm going to make a mark at five and then I'm going to turn it round and do exactly the same. So find two and a half, find the middle and just put a mark. So that should give me a five inch square. Which is about, about right. So now I'm going to trim this up with my rotary cutter. Okay, so I've trimmed it down to five by five. I've got a piece of backing that's five by five. I'm going to put those right sides together. I'm going to sew all around four sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to leave a gap in the bottom for turning it through to the right side. So because the instructions don't say that you need any wadding or batting in this, when I trimmed it down to five by five, I left the tear away stabiliser at the same size and then that might give it a little bit more stability I'm not sure so this is the bottom I'm going to leave an opening in the bottom so that's where I'm going to start with my quarter inch seam allowance may not need the stabilizer I don't I don't really know but I think it might just give it a little bit more stability Just going to trim away the threads, clip the corners and then turn it right side out and see if it needs top stitching. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it through the opening, push out the corners, give it a press and see how it looks. Just take your time with this, you won't rip it if you take your time, just go in and grab a corner and then just ease it out bit by bit. So I'm just gonna get an old embossing stylus and just poke out the corners. So that's how it's looking so far. So if you just pull the seams where you do your start and stop, it generally folds in for you so it just needs a good pressing now okay so it does say to top stitch all the way around and that will seal up the edge I'll start at the bottom I'll line the outside of my foot up with the fabric and I'll just start stitching Turn the machine off, put it out of the way and there it is, all done.
might not be perfect but considering I've not used the embroidery sheen for several years um, it's not too bad is it so it does give it a little bit of stiffness by leaving the uh, tear away inside but I suppose you could cut the tear away away if you wanted to and you could put some wadding in um, I'm not sure if I've got my mug absolutely central but it will do I'll take a close-up picture and I'll put it in the thumbnail and at the end of the video so please give the video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video thank you